Time now for the morning rush. APD says investigators are set to question the lone suspect for the murders of an Albuquerque couple. Police ID the suspect as Richard Ross for the deaths of Deborah and John Embry. The couple was found dead inside their home near Unser and Montano. Ross was found in Oklahoma with their car. No word on how they died. We do know the suspect and one of the victims, John Embry, have a criminal history. Police say charges for this, the murders rather could come in just a few days. Breaking overnight, one person is out of a home this morning after a fire at an apartment complex in the area of Iron and 3rd. Albuquerque Fire Rescue says at around 2 this morning, firefighters were rushing to the apartment after reports of seeing smoke pouring out of one of the units. AFR says crews got the fire under control within about 30 minutes. Fire officials say the unit was unoccupied, but the one resident is displaced because of smoke damage. AFR says the cause is believed to be accidental. Investigating a crash involving a pedestrian in the area of Central and San Pedro. That area is back open this hour. According to police, a vehicle struck a pedestrian in the area overnight. The pedestrian rushed to UNM Hospital with critical injuries. No word on if the driver will be cited in this case. Police had to shut down a section of that area. During the investigation, again, it's back open. Kristen. Mostly cloudy sky through the day today. Not likely to see anything widespread when it comes to rain or snow. Temperatures, though, will be warmer as we get you into tomorrow. Snow showers arriving late for the north and east. Albuquerque and for most of the state, strong winds coming in overnight Wednesday. Crystal? Back behind bars this morning, Sarah Mowder, the woman who pled guilty last month to negligently killing six dogs she was paid to transport from Albuquerque to Texas, is once again in police custody. As part of her plea deal, Mowder was sentenced to 18 months probation. She's now accused of violating that probation by failing to report and testing positive for drugs. Mowder is set to face a judge next week. Berlioz County deputies could see a bump in pay if county commissioners vote on it. This is in their administrative meeting tonight. Right now, they make just over $27 per hour. According to the Memorandum of Understanding, if it gets approved, uh, final approval rather, that would jump to $30 per hour. Now, it would cost the county about $4.3 million per year to make that happen. The meeting is set to begin at 5 p.m. This is in the Vincent E. Griego Chambers. Some Albuquerque property owners may soon be hit with a bill from the city asking them to pay to fix buckling sidewalks. The city inspector general released a report revealing Albuquerque has more than $400 million in repairs that's needed to make sidewalks, driveways and curbs ADA compliant. According to city policy, it's the business or home homeowner's responsibility to foot this bill. The city says people who are given a notice have 180 days to do so before the city does and sends them a bill. New at 6, the city of Santa Fe could loan out some of the artwork once displayed at the Midtown campus. Now, you may remember, remember the Santa Fe University of Art and Design closed in May. According to a city resolution before the closure, the art collection was maintained by the university, but it now sits in storage. The collection includes rare sculptures, photographs, oil paintings, and ancient ceramics. City officials would seek museum quality conditions when loaning out that artwork. APS is continuing to open their checkbook, trying to get stronger voter turnout for the upcoming mail-in election in February. On the ballot, voters will decide whether to raise property taxes to fund millions of dollars for APS construction projects. APS recently mailed out 96,000 flyers, adding up to about $26,000. In last year's APS election, fewer than 5,000 people actually voted. That's about a 6.5% turnout. Kristen. Metro threat index added to for today. We've got some cold morning temperatures below freezing and also that cloudy sky expected through the day, but that's not necessarily going to hurt us. David? Looking ahead, the biopark may soon be looking at fewer dollars for some special projects, and officials are blaming lower attendance at this year's River of Lights. Officials are saying about 9,000 people, fewer people rather, have gone so far this year. Event organizers say there are no construction projects, and they have added more shuttle buses, so now they're wondering why people are not showing up. The money raised goes to biopark staff training, special animal enrichment items, and more. The event will run through the 30th of this month. The lighting of the Angel Tree at Civic Plaza is taking place this Thursday. The tree honors the lives of New Mexican children who have died from child abuse. Advocates for abused children gather downtown placing ornaments on the tree, each one honoring a child who's died from abuse. The organization, the Guardians of the Children, says 51 ornaments are on the tree. Four new ones were added just this year. Kristen.
Time now for a check on that morning commute. Right now, we don't have anything major out there when it comes to the map. No crashes, no accidents. We also have our news tracker out and about this morning, headed south on I-25 near the Jefferson exit. A few cars out in front, but seems to be moving smoothly. Of course, we'll keep eyes on this for you throughout the morning. The Ice Topes bringing home Minor League Baseball's Copa de la Diversión Award. The National Award, which celebrates Hispanic heritage, is now in the hands of the Topes for their transformation into the Mariachis de Nuevo Mexico. They transformed into the group for four games this season. It's part of the league's fan engagement initiative. In all, 33 teams adopted alternate personas as part of this campaign. Well, happening today, for those of you heading to tonight's Lobo men's basketball game against Colorado, you will get the chance to get into Meow Wolf for free. That's because Meow Wolf is handing out free tickets to each fan at the game. The tickets will be good until next Monday. Meow Wolf says that it simply wants New Mexicans to support both art and sports. The team is preparing to take on Colorado at Dreamstyle Arena. That's tonight at 7 p.m. We're taking you back 57 years ago on this day in New Mexico. We had a pretty severe ice storm move across eastern New Mexico, dropped accumulations up to an inch of ice out there. Power was out for several days and made traveling horrendous. So that was 57 years ago on this day. Let's now take you to the five facts. At number five, the city of Santa Fe is named one of the Travel Channel's top 10 picturesque holiday locations. It made the cut due to its unique holiday traditions that you cannot find anywhere else in the U.S. These include things like chili pepper wreaths, pinon scented bonfires, and farolitos lining the walkways. Those are just some of the mentioned draws. Now, the only other U.S. city to make that top part of the list was Woodstock, Vermont. For a full link to the list, you can go to always on krqe.com. Number four now heads up. Some Albuquerque property owners may soon be hit with a bail from the city asking them to pay to fix buckling sidewalks. The city inspector general released a report more than a year ago revealing Albuquerque has more than $400 million in repairs needed to make sidewalks, driveways, and even curbs ADA compliant. According to city policy, it's the business or homeowner's responsibility to foot the bill to fix these issues. The city says people who are given a notice to fix their sidewalk have 180 days to do so before the city fixes it and sends you the bill. At number three, temperatures warmer today as we climb into the low 50s. A lot of cloud cover over the state, but not necessarily looking at any rain or snow just yet. Tomorrow, very strong winds, likely late tomorrow night into Thursday morning. And you'll notice the temperatures dropping too, out of the 50s, down to the 40s to close out the week. At number two, back behind bars this morning, Sarah Mauter, the woman who pled guilty last month to negligently killing six dogs that she was paid to transport from Albuquerque to Texas, is once again in police custody. This is a, as part of her plea. Mauder was sentenced to 18 months probation, but now she's accused of violating that probation by failing to report and testing positive for drugs. Mauder is set to face a judge next week. On to number one now. This morning, APD says investigators are set to question the suspect for the murders of an Albuquerque couple. Police ID the suspect as Richard Ross for the deaths of Deborah and John Embry. The couple was found dead inside their home near Unser and Montano. Police say Ross was found in Oklahoma with their car. No word on how they died just yet, but we've learned the suspect and one of the victims, John, have a criminal history. Police say charges for this murder could come within just a few days. If you want to look up more information on this case, go to our website. That's always on krqe.com.